What's going on, man? It's the franchise J. Clax and this beautiful lady Ooh. to the left of me is... You don't know who I am? No, I want you to introduce yourself. I am Dr. Cass. There she go with this doctor. <laughs> What's going on? Welcome to After the Show. Uh, we're here just to make sure everything is good. We're going to let you know what's going on. We got a whole bunch of info for you, I promise. And I, I want you to make sure you be able to watch our show and see the last show. So make sure you check out our YouTube page. We got you. I promise you. You'll thank me later. Man, we got to jump right into it today. Okay. Have you been paying attention to the news? Uh, I, I think so. Okay. So, uh... I guess Mariah is like, well, after baby number 12, maybe I need to go and get custody, sole custody of our twins. I'm not sure what that, why he, you know, why they need to do that because um, yeah, him having sex. Oh, by the way, we have a sex therapist today and creating kids. And creating kids has nothing to do with custody, but I don't know. What's your thoughts? Uh, I'm trying to say his money must be different. Like, his money must be different. Like, you got actually a football team plus somebody off the bench, right? Usually, you know, he may have a starting five like basketball, but he actually got 11 plus one. Oh, I actually like that. I, did, I At first, I was like, what are you talking about? Right. His money... It's money different. I'm telling you, there's no way. <laughs> it's more than just his money different. I'm so glad we got that sex just in here. However, um, you know, I know that you are a big fan of wrestling. Go ahead. Did you hear what's happening? Go ahead. My girl, Stephanie, she's she's she resigned. Who are you talking about, Stephanie McMahon? Yes. Man, they messed up wrestling. So listen, I'm sorry, this is not KSA. This, this, what I'm saying now is all not thoughts, KSA. It's thoughts all thoughts of Jay Claxton. <laughs> Y'all actually messed up wrestling. I was a Ric Flair fan. I missed the NWA. I miss all of that. You came down and made it like commercial. It's like the circus. I can't, I, I can't do the circus. I never, I, I don't do clowns. I get it. So listen, I, oh yeah, because we don't do clowns. Yeah, I don't do clowns. You know, um, we have a great show today. Yes. Um, as I said to you earlier, we have a sex therapist. Yes. Um, I, I'm sorry, a sexologist. Right. Well, you know what I'm going to ask her. I, I already know, please. You please. know what I'm going to ask Save it for her. Save it for her. Um, she's out of Houston, Texas, and okay. she has so much information about how to spice it up in the new year. Now, what is up with you and spices and everything? You mean, shout out to McCormick as well. What's up with you and spices? I like to cook everywhere I go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, look, um, we have, as I told you, we have Tiffany... Oh, uh, we have we have Tiffany um, Robinson and Tiffany. What's going on with you? So I gotta stop you. Oh, sorry. Tiffany Terry Thomas. Oh, Tiffany Terry. I Thomas. apologize. I want to make sure we got it right. That's it. I just want to make apologize. sure we got it right. We don't want no smoke out of you. I want to make sure we got it right. I know because everything in Houston comes out flaming hot. Right. right. <laughs> we don't want no smoke. You guys are totally fine. Hello. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. How are you? Fantastic. I'm That's actually going to let Jay start because he has a pressing question that he's been <laughs> trying to ask us ever since he found out you were coming on the show. Right. So sexologists, sex therapists, that all, you know, you cover all of that, right? So let me ask you a question. Oh, my God. Who therapists the therapist? Who therapists the therapist? Well, actually... And I know um, grammatically that wasn't right. I'm sorry. You know, it wasn't right, but who really therapists? Who gives you therapy as well? Um, who gives you sex therapy? Oh. <laughs> honestly, um, I have a good circle of colleagues and stuff that we go to and that we um, bounce information from and, and ideas and just thoughts and things that we're going through because I think that you can learn from anybody. Okay. Um, so, and it's also important to have a therapist because if you're sitting here thinking that you can solve all your issues yourself, you're wrong. Okay. Um, it's like, we are of one body. So you have to use the rest of the body to make sure that you can actually function well. So yes, the therapist has therapy. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to. Right. I, I always try to figure that out. I always try to figure that out because I'm trying to, since you give it so much, how do you get it back in? Most definitely. Um, 
And with me, I feel like it's necessary because, because like you said, because I'm, I'm pouring a lot of myself out. I have to always make sure that my cup is full because what's out of my, what's in my cup is for me, but what is out of my cup is for others. And so I have to be mindful of that and I'm constantly keeping my cup full as well. So okay. I'm not giving people the things that my husband needs versus the things that they need. Okay. I Absolutely. So let's it. jump right into it. Give us some tips on what we need to do to bring a little bit more sauce yes. to a relationship. Um, I think number one, one of the major things is, is educate yourself about sex. I think with couples, we have gotten into a situation where we have learned from when we were young, right? Whether it's been watching TV, learning from your friends and stuff like that. And then you take that into your marriage, you take that into your relationships and it's no, it's lack of education, it's ignorance, right? Sexual ignorance, where you're just sitting there and you're like, well, this is what we do and this is what I'm used to doing, right? And I have a, a company called Frisky Femme and one of our models is the sex is not one size fits all, it's customizable. And the thing about certain relationships is, is you'll bring in, for example, you'll bring in, uh, a woman can bring in the way she sucked Tom's penis into how she's gonna suck James's penis. And then <laughs> and the thing about that is like, James is like, I don't, that's not how I like that, right? And, and vice versa, a man can do all these tricks on another woman and he's like, ah, you know, and then come into another woman that's fully aware of herself. And she's like, that's enough, you're doing too much, right? So I think it's educating yourself about it because a lot of us don't do that. We sit up here and we just bring in the information that we thought we knew instead of getting to know our partner and saying, what do you like? What are the things are you interested in? And being able to fill them out instead of playing the guessing game. I feel like couples play sex Russian roulette. Like, oh, wow. this is what you're about to get. You know what I'm saying? And I, I don't, and it, and it what I find is a lot of couples come to me and be like, I'm, I'm over it. I'm sick of it. I'm, it's boring. It's tiring, you know? And so I'm like, and then I start asking questions and it's like, well, what have you tried that's new? And they have an idea in here, but they've never said it out here. And I think that matters. I, I absolutely agree. Real quick before we go, um, how important is intimacy in a relationship? Intimacy is key. It's one of the most top things that a relationship is needs to be built on. And I think we have a problem with not understanding what intimacy is. We think intimacy is sex. Intimacy is into me, I see, right? It's the vulnerability. It's the transparency. It's literally walking in a room and this is just figuratively with your clothes off and being able to be yourself, right? And not being like, oh, I'm like covering your boobs or, and, and, and I'm, I'm using that as that, but I'm saying as your true self, saying these are the things I like, these are the things I don't like, these are the things that I wanna try. Intimacy is all about getting to know oneself and the other person without roadblocks and without rules and saying, well, I don't, I don't wanna know what you did in this relationship because that don't have nothing to do with me. If it benefits you, then it, it is information that you need. And I think we, for, we, we have distorted the word intimacy because we think it just means sex. Right. I wanna be more intimate, I wanna be more intimate. And it's like, no, then that means you wanna be more vulnerable. You wanna be transparent. You need to take your clothes off and actually have that conversation. And so we don't do that. Right, no, listen, we greatly, greatly appreciate you because you dropped dimes. You really dropped a bunch of gems and dimes for us. And we greatly, greatly appreciate it. We appreciate you being a part of After the Show. Thank you so much. For more information, check out Tiffany Terry Thomas at Tiffany Terry Thomas on IG. Take care. Tiffany Terry Thomas was amazing. She dropped a whole bunch of gems. Did you learn anything? No, did you learn something? I learned a lot. What are you talking about? I know what intimacy is. Uh, I don't, what are you I mean, talking about? She said, well, I'm grown at, I'm no, grown woman. No, Ooh, no, no, no. She did say when I walk in the room, you just feel like, oh my God, I'm in love with him. And that's how I feel like you feel. So I am I got in love it. with you. I got it. I, got I it. am in love with I'm, you. I'm but you know who that. else I'm in love with? Okay. I am in love with my bestie of 20 plus years. Right. I'm so proud of him. And he is senior VP of Series X and by day you can hear him on the heat from noon right. to 6 p.m. Right. And you can hear him on the weekends for the weekend countdown. But we brought him on today because 
Did you know that hip hop is turning 50? Didn't I tell you I'm 37? And Doug is. No, no dog is. It lies you tell. So, you know, I am so excited. We have we have Dion DC, Dion Summers, you know, a fella B- Baltimorean up here with us today. Hey, Dion. Yo, that was kind of an A and B conversation y'all was having over there. So I'm glad I'm I'm in because I was about to see my way out because like <laughs> oh, we had a the chain, we, man. We had a sex therapist earlier. <laughs> right. I love it. I love it. I love it. What up, Doc? What up? What up, Jay? So How you feeling, man? Going, man? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Welcome to after the show. It's the after party. Thanks for having me. Do we have to deepen our voices when you say that? It's yeah. after the show. Yeah. After and the you, show. And you, you, did, you did Love Zone. You did Love Zone originally. So you know how to change your voice and get into that pocket. You, you know. Yes, yes. What? Welcome to after the show. I like that. Yes. We might need to use you as we a voice. We need to. We might need to use you as a the voice. The big voice. The big voice is Dion. <laughs> but no, Love it. Thank Thanks for having me, y'all. <laughs> thank you for coming. We appreciate you. I, I know you got a lot of stuff going on. Hip hop's turning 50. What does that mean to you? Because you play a big part in, you know, being a, uh, the vice president of urban programming at Sirius XM. So you play a real big part. What's your thoughts? Yo, um, the streets still have something to say. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like I've been in radio, you know, y'all know this. I've been in radio uh, for about 30 years now. So you know, whether it be, you know, Run DMC and a Tribe Called Quest and Wu-Tang and Busta Rhymes or, you know, Trippy Red and Kodak Black, you know, I've seen the progression of hip hop. And the one constant is that the streets have something to say. It's right. always been street poetry. It's always been the culture uh, put into words, you know, since the very beginning, since the message, since Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. And the one thing that I that I know for a fact, the fact that hip hop is now 50 and still thriving, still streaming, still Grammy award winning, you know, is that the streets still have something to say. Wow. Right, right. right. That's a great outlook on it. And what I want to ask, I hear a lot of people saying that they don't like new hip hop. And to me, when they say that, they automatically age themselves. You, you understand what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. what is your thoughts on that? Because you've been able to transcend for all of these years. You've been able to make sure that you've been up with the music, up with the current music. How do you do that? So I say it like this, like, you know, youth always pushes the culture. You right. know what I'm saying? When 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 we were in our 20s, you know, it was all about bum, stickity, bum, stickity, bum, right? It was all ah! about, yo, it was the Humpty dance. It was self-destruction. You know, right. whether it was having a party or becoming more politically active, it was fight the power. You know, whatever it was, the youth had the voice. And right. so now that we're no longer in our roaring 20s, I, I you know, Jay says he's 37. Right. Okay. And I'm 25. You know, 30s and new 20s. I'm 25. On, we'll, we'll accept all that and do the math later. Um, <laughs> But now that we're away from that sweet spot of the 20s, we have to let these kids of today have that voice the same way we had that voice. And it may not be the voice that we have. It may not be the, the you know, it may not be the, the, the vibe that, that we want, but you have to let the kids run the culture the same way we ran the culture at our age. So you don't have to like it, but you do have to respect it. Wow. Got it. Got it. Let me ask you a question. What is your favorite hip hop movie? And, and I, I'm gonna I'm oh say this gosh. because I'm gonna say this because I was doing a gig the Did other not day. Go down this rabbit no, hole. I was doing a gig the other day, and I and I played some of these artists, and I'm like, yo, I gotta go home and watch these certain movies. What is your favorite hip hop? movie? And it doesn't matter if it's from back then or was more recent, is such such as like straight out of Compton or anything like that. But what's your favorite hip hop movie? Yo, you know what? This is, uh, I feel like this is a trick question. It's not, I promise it you. Is. Like I, I, it I, I, is. I, I, no, I'm it is. I promise. Right now, Jay, but, <laughs> but I'm gonna say my answer and I'm gonna stand by my answer because of all the great hip hop movies and there are a lot of great hip hop movies. Right. But I go for the one, one of the first ones that started the ball rolling because without Crush Groove, Oh my, oh my goodness! Oh my god! Oh my god! 
So Yo, listen, there's nothing I, else. Like, like to me, Crush uh, Groove is the definitive no, hip hop movie. No, you had a it, young LL Cool J. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, like hip hop was hungry. Hip hop was young. Hip hop just wanted to get it by any means necessary. So you don't know what yeah. you just Crush did. Crush Groove and body moving. Listen, you don't know what you just stop, did. Stop. It is. Stop, it, you are right. Stop. You are very correct. But you don't understand yeah. the rabbit hole you just jumped stop. in. Okay? <laughs> real quick, you don't understand. Real quick before you go to your meeting, I know you got big things going on, right? I had an issue in Crush Groove. No, my, he still has my the issue. favorite movie. I, I still have an issue with it today. Sheila E should have dealt with Run, and she should have she should have slept with Run instead of sleeping with Russell. Listen, <laughs> like, why I would asked you, you not to do with this. I Run, asked you not to go with Russell on wait. the stage. That's your issue, Jay. Like, he's still mad at Sheila E to this day. If I see Sheila man. right now, I'm like Sheila, why did you go deal with Russell? Yo, that is a rabbit hole that's between y'all. Shout to Sheila E. Like, I, I, I my name is Bennett. You know that. Bennett. It. My name is well, Paul. That's between y'all. Yo, okay. Thank you so much, Dion. We really enjoyed having you on here. Hip Hop is turning 50. Yes. For more information and how you can follow and find my great friend Dion Summers, check him out on Instagram at Dion Deasy. Thanks for that picture, too, though. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you did some good research. Yeah, for real. I remember that night. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dion. We you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, franchise. Thank you. Thank you after the show. Love y'all. I appreciate you. Love you back. I just want to say thank you for having, like, Dion DZ being a part of this show Man. today meant a lot, especially because he gave me my start in radio. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Right. He, gave, he was the first person to hire me on commercial radio. So it, it means it means a lot, you know, to have that guy yeah, Dion is on special. after the show. He's Dion special. He's a special, right. special person. And, and he's been every step of not only our careers, but even in our relationship, he's played a, a major right. part. So, you Definitely. know. So it was good to have him I'm on. Dion. And I am excited about having our next guest on because yeah. I have, I'm not even going to say I have money issues. I just need money literacy i need money education right. i need do. i need uh i need to move a little bit money discipline i need to be disciplined with my finances but this young lady is a financial strategist she has strategies to tell you what to do and how to do it and why you should do it none other than miss john tate robinson how are you doing today Hello, hello. Hey, I, how are you, are beautiful? You yes, yes. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. Right. So listen, I'm I'm going to get straight to it. How I know that saving money is not just the thing because money depreciates and if we're not making any money off our money, so that's not the thing to do. What should we do in order to um, have our money make money for us because i think that's where the wealth is i mean just the money should be making money for us how do we do that absolutely so and and what you just said is so foundational and a lot of people don't grasp that we often think about money we think about making money um we think about saving money but we don't think about the fact that we need to make our money work for us not that we need to work for money but how do we make our money work for us? And so a very little known strategy that people are just coming to know about is putting your money in cash value life insurance. Oh, wow. Yes, yes. I didn't know that. Absolutely. So when we think about life insurance, we automatically equate it to, to debt, right? Yeah, but, yeah. Life insurance is one of the best ways to make your money work for you. So much and so, the government has multiple laws that regulate how we utilize life insurance. Uh, government officials, the super, super wealthy people have been utilizing this principle for years. Even though you're just, we're just now starting to hear people really, really talk about it. This has been happening for years. And so when I talk about life insurance, I'm not talking about term life. I'm not talking about the life insurance that costs $3.99 a month, the progressive, the state farm stuff, but cash value life insurance that's 
properly structured. Right. That's the key. It has to be properly structured. And when you leverage cash value life insurance, you can get returns from 3% on up uh, compound interest. Um, if you are utilizing an IUL, which is an index universal life insurance policy, you are gaining interest based on the stock market without the risk of the stock market. Okay. What do I mean by that? The floor is zero. So okay. when the stock market tanks, your your money is safe. You're okay, never gotcha. getting money, gotcha. but you'll get all the gains. So this is introducing the concept of infinite banking or becoming your own bank. Right, because the stock market is down right now. Like when I actually even looked into Tesla, um, Tesla was when I first bought it, it was seven eight hundred dollars. It's almost at a hundred now, which is crazy. So the stock market is down, and I mean this is the time to buy. I, I, I do know that, but um, just trying to figure out what we need to do in order to make it work. Can you give us um, two quick tips um, on what what are the top two things that you would tell us to do on to how to make our money work for us? Yes. So the key to making your money work for you is to get your dollar to work um, multiple times in, in at least one place. So an example of that is, so I talked about the cash value life insurance. And so one of the things that me and my husband are doing is we have money in a properly structured, I just want to be clear, it has to be structured properly, um, whole life insurance policy. That money compounds interest. What we're going to be doing is taking a loan from our own life insurance policy and then purchasing real estate. So while our money is compounding interest in that life insurance policy, because really you're borrowing against collateral. So the money's still there, compounding interest. Now we have a property that's also making us money. That's the same dollar working in two places. Right. Another thing. Um, and you have to be disciplined to do this, is leveraging credit cards. One thing that a lot of us don't think about is utilizing other people's money to right. make money. Right. Got to be disciplined, though. So I have an American Express, uh, Express Platinum card. Whenever I travel, I get five times points on that. Um, I travel for free. Travel first class for free. The key is paying it off every single month. You can use that play in alignment with the life insurance play, and you can have your money working two, three times, one dollar working in all these different places for you. So right. those are just a couple of quick tips that I can give you. But I really want to encourage people to get more information on how to leverage cash value life insurance. It's, wow. it's a game changer. Awesome. So what I need, I want, first and foremost, I want to thank you. Thank you so because much. Because you gave us so much food. I, I appreciate it. I, I actually want to talk to you offline or see if I can get some information. And I want our folks, our family, uh, after the show family, to get this information from you as well. Because I'm pretty sure that they don't know because I don't know. So mm -hmm. um, we thank you so much for coming and, uh, you know, to get more information from John Tay, make sure you holler at her at Let's Talk Money, uh, jmitchell.com. Am I correct? That's the right, yes, that's that's the right website, that's right? That's all right, I thank you so much for taking time to give us all of that. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right, take care. And she gave us so much food. She did. She gave us so much food. And you know who else is giving us great recipes and good food? Our friends in the comments. And we like spices. We love spices. <laughs> you love spices. I love right. spices. You love but spices. you do too, because you love my lemon pepper chicken. Right. You love lemon pepper well, on I'm everything. Not, I love lemon pepper. I know, right? But if you go check out www.mccormick.com, they have an amazing recipe for lemon pepper chicken. Actually, maybe I'll try it tonight. What you okay. Think? I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm yeah. hungry. You're hungry. I am. Too. Right now. You, right, no, it, it's going to take some time. Okay. Right. I'm hungry. Right it's going to take some time. Listen, talk about food. What you got for me? Food for thought. This is my food for thought for today. I want to talk about the value in your circles. I want to talk about the value in your circle. When I talk about circle, 
I'm talking about the people that are closest to you, the people that are in your household, the people that you talk to on a regular basis, people that you call on the phone. There has to be some value in those relationships. If there is no value in the relationship, what are we actually doing it for? These folks should be able to uh, push you up, lift you up, help motivate you. Uh, they should be able to tell you when you're doing wrong. They should be able to just have your back financially, spiritually, and mentally. If they don't have that, if they're not doing that, you need to find a new circle. You need to cut them off. You, you, you just need to stop because uh, like studies show, at the end of the day, you pick up the habits of the five people closest to you. So you really do need to take and make sure your circle is right. Find yourself a mentor. Actually, make sure you are not the smartest person in the room. Make sure your circle is good. And that's my food for thought for today. Man, we have had an amazing show, don't yes. you think? Yes, I, I had a actually great time today. I learned a lot. I got a chance to talk to the, the, the guy who hired me in radio. Uh, I, I am in a good space today. Listen, I can't wait until next week. Next week, we have a lot more surprises. We have, of course, we're still talking about hip hop is turning 50. Right. Um, actually, did you know that it, there's an actual date? It's August the 11th that hip hop turns 50. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 So listen, that's it for the show. Man, that's it. Um, once again, I would like to thank our guests, uh, John T. Robinson, Tiffany Terry Thomas, Dion Deasy. Dion Deasy. We thank you so much. <laughs> we thank our sponsors, McCormick, Los Hermanos, Tequila. Oh, and you thank can't you forget, so much. you cannot forget this amazing establishment, Fire, Fire and Smoke, Smoke Cigar, Cigar Parlor. We appreciate you as well. We'll talk to you next week right here on After the Show, Clax, Dr. Not Kaz Kaz. Vaughn. Take care. Be safe. This episode was brought to you by Los Hermanos Tequila, the spirit of tequila.